Selwyn here from windstrength.com. On this video, I'll be talking about everything wrist strap related, how to use them, when to use them, and when you shouldn't use them. So let's start off with what are they? Obviously, wrist straps come in all different shapes, sizes, lengths, elasticities, uh, but for the most part, there'll be some sort of fabric, elastic fabric. Uh, the stiffness will depend, obviously, on the strength of the wrist strap and what you're kind of using it for. But for the most part, It'll be some sort of fabric. This one is an 80 centimeter length from Elite FTS. I believe it's, this is the Sidewinder model that they have. Uh, but this is an example of it. They'll have a loop where you put your thumb through and a Velcro thing so you can stretch it around. And they will have some, some degree of um, elasticity to them. That's where you get the tension from. Uh, everyone has their own wrist, wrist wrap kind of notion. Um, they'll all come in different lengths and sizes. And I guess, how do you choose which one's right for you? And that's going to be a, a pretty difficult question. Uh, because again, it'll depend on your goals, your usage, your requirements. Um, I started using wrist straps mainly to help deal with some wrist pain. So working at a computer for a long time, I started developing what they call like carpal tunnel type syndrome, uh, where it hurts to have my wrist in certain positions. Uh, this is really manifested in like curls with a straight barbell. This feels like there's a pin uh, getting inserted into my wrist as well as doing overhead pressing, any pressing movement where the wrist is in an unusual position. Uh, this is mainly with barbell work. I've noticed with dumbbells, the wrist pain doesn't really show up just because we're able to move the forearm and the hands in like whatever position you need them to. So this is mainly relevant to uh, working with a barbell and pressing a barbell. I found personally, but for you, uh, for your experience, that might be different. Uh, it's also good to have some wrist wraps for uh, Olympic style movements, especially in that cleaning position where the wrist has a tendency to get torqued really far back. Uh, same with the front squat in that front rack position. Uh, the wrist can uh, have a, a lot of stress put through it. And if you're not used to that, this is one way to kind of help train around that or mitigate some of that pain along the way. Longer isn't always better, so it depends on your usage for it if and your personal preferences for how much you want your hand and wrist to be wrapped. Uh, the tougher the elastic also isn't necessarily... Uh, more, more is not always more in this case. Sometimes there's a case for having a lighter wrap, a thicker wrap, a thinner wrap, and that's just going to come have to come down to your personal preferences and a little bit of experimentation uh, with your usage. So. If you're looking at heavy powerlifting, maybe you do need that uh, really long, really thick and strong wrist strap. But if you're kind of just dealing with a little bit of wrist pain, maybe you don't need to go as tough and as long uh, of a wrist strap if you don't need it because you just kind of get away with some light support. It depends on how much support you're looking to get into it. Uh, another thing the wrist straps do help with is uh, buckling of the weight. So sometimes in the bench press, if you if you have a tendency for your wrist to kind of wobble a little bit, this will help ensure that it stays uh, locked into position there. So just like anything that has elastic in it, uh, you all know like the elastic on your underwear, they'll eventually over time stretch out. And this is no different to that. No matter how um, expensive of a wrist strap you get, uh, the elastic's gonna wear it and that's just inevitable. Um, I've noticed for me personally, if you wash them, just put them through a gentle, like a hand wash cycle, but don't put them through the dryer, just let them hang dry. It seems to let them last a little bit longer. Um, I'll show you some shots of my wrist wraps that I've been using a lot, the Elite FTS Sidewinders. Um, I have orange ones and I got a free pair of black ones during their sale. So you, you'll be able to see the difference between a new one and an old one that's had about maybe two years of use. And again, I mean, it's two years of use and all it means when the elastic stretches out is that you just have to stretch it even tighter than last time because that uh, support is just going to be a little bit looser. So, I mean, it's not that big of a deal if you get a more expensive one, the elastic stretches out, you can, you can just wrap that tighter. And if it's a long enough wrist wrap, then you just keep uh, wrapping it around and that kind of effect is mitigated. But just something to keep in mind, I don't think it's necessary to spend out a lot of money if it's not within the budget, I think you can get away with some cheaper wrist wraps and cheaper equipment. And again, something to keep in mind is uh, if you are competing in powerlifting or some sort of barbell sport, look at what that federation allows because that will dictate A, the specific type of wrist strap you can buy if it does have certain requirements or B, if you're even allowed to use them. So some federations in powerlifting might not allow it during the bench press. And if all you use it for is a bench press, then uh, you might be better off not purchasing them or getting a cheap pair of wrist straps so that during your practice sessions or your lighter loads, 
you can use them all for most of the training session. Just make sure you throw in some unwrapped wrist training for the heavy benching so that when you do enter that competition, it's not going to affect your competition day because it's not something you're trained for. And that brings me to the point of when to use wrist wraps. Uh, first point is if you're feeling pain and this helps mitigate pain, use it. That's that's how I approach the situation. Um, again, dealing with wrist pain, uh, I'll use wrist wraps pretty much 80% of the time. I won't really worry about if I should use them or shouldn't. Uh, I don't think it's going to lead you to having weak wrists. I don't think that's a problem, especially if you're really just training for um, training for training's sake. Now, if you have a, obviously, again, as I said, if you have a powerlifting competition or other type of competition where they don't allow that wrist strap to be used and you do have pain, you're going to have to strike a balance between training uh, without pain by using the wrist straps and then training with that pain uh, every now and then just so you can have that exposure to how the barbell feels in your hand without having that wrist support because it is quite a different, there is a, a significant difference I feel personally between say a bench press with wrist straps and a bench press without wrist straps just because you can kind of, you do start to rely on that that tactile aid at the very least to keep that wrist in shape and to keep that hand from moving around too much when you are pressing that weight up and down. Uh, and another time to consider using them is uh, during, as I said, those front rack movements or any type of cleaning movement where you have to kind of throw a weight up onto your shoulders and your wrist might get put into a compromised position. Uh, again, that's something that leads me to feel some pain in the wrists. And again, I'll use some wrist straps there. And again, I'm not worried about using them. Uh, just because that catch position, that front rack catch position, I don't think you're developing wrist strength in there. You're just kind of wanting to mitigate any pain. And it's all about, uh, the way to think about the wrist rep is it helps you train for longer with less pain. And I think that's a generally a good thing. Um, I don't think there will be an argument against that. I don't think people want to train with pain for longer. So if this helps you train longer without with, by reducing that pain effect, then I think use it. I'm all for it. Highly recommend to do that just because it's better, going to be better for you in the long run. Now, if you don't have wrist pain and you still want to use them, this is where I would suggest using them with a different strategy. I would suggest using them sparingly, maybe only using them on the heaviest of heavy sets. So when you're going for your one, three, five rep maxes, max attempts, things of that nature where you're not really doing reps, you're kind of pushing the weight, pushing the limits that you have. That way it just adds that little bit of safety. I've noticed that it's harder for the barbell to slip a little bit every now and then you feel a slip in the wrists and the wrist wraps kind of help mitigate that to a degree. Obviously you still have to pay attention to how your hands are moving, how your wrists are moving during the press. But if you use the wrist wraps, especially during maximal efforts, I think it'll help there just with a little bit of safety concern in mind. Uh, but other than that, I would suggest using them sparingly because Again, you don't want to rely, you don't want to have to rely on something if you don't have to, but if you have to rely on it, use it more often. That's kind of how I see these these tools. And either good nor bad, it depends on your situation. Uh, so I'll go over how to wrap your wrists in a couple of different ways. I have a couple of different ways I like to wrap my wrist depending on the situation. Um, if I'm doing reps, I'll, I won't wrap them as tightly and I'll, I won't go as far up on the palm, but if I'm going for heavy, uh, heavy work, I will wrap them a little tighter and you'll, I'll notice some blood loss in the fingertips there and go a bit further up in the hand and start using a casting technique for the heavy, heavy reps that way. That's mainly because I won't keep them on in between sets. Whereas if I'm doing reps, uh, if I'm doing like my volume work or hypertrophy work where I'm doing a lot of volume, I'm gonna wrap it in such a way that the wrist wraps can stay on throughout the entire session rather than having to take them on and off each each after each set. So as you can see, so I don't get confused, I will put a, an R and an L so I know which side goes on which hand. That just saves me some time <laughs> in the gym and not having to figure out which way it goes. So I like to, this is my personal way of doing it if I'm gonna be doing some volume work. So not a heavy not a heavy wrap, not a tight wrap, just kind of there for a little bit of support. So obviously I'll start with the thumb. Um, you can start with the pinky as well. It's kind of up to you how you like to use them. I just like the thumb because it feels more stable. You're able to really pull tension off of it. Um, and again, uh, if, this, if this elastic loop breaks, there's no need to really get a new one. You can just grasp it in between in the webbing of your forefinger and your thumb and stretch it around that way. Obviously because I have the thumb loop put your thumb in the thumb loop and I like to have this stitching on the outside so there's the, th the smooth side is always touching your wrist and then stretch it a little bit so it covers the palm of your hand 
and then I will wrap it around so it catches the base so it catches the base of my palm and then get a little bit of tension not too much and then again just wrap it around the base of the palm and then slowly just come down and loop itself over the wrist several as many times as you want and that's that and I'll I won't press with the thumb loop in I'll just I'll just pull that thumb loop out so that's how I like to wrap a wrist again um, this is for a light volume work so I can still feel my fingers you, there's no blood loss in the hand and you can tell obviously if this is too tight because after that first set if you can't feel your fingertips you've wrapped it too tight for this purpose um, I'll generally again keep this on for maybe 20 minutes 15 to 20 minutes depending on how long how many sets I have and this is comfortable for the whole time uh, again I wouldn't necessarily I've, I've tried wrapping them further up on the forearm I don't think that's necessary because really all you're trying to do is stop this movement or this from coming too far back um, you can see that the the wrist wrap stops this backwards movement of the hand this it doesn't go as far back relatively and that just adds that stability when you're trying to press up on a barbell and it also stops any any sudden loss in grip that you might have and it adds that little bit of safety factor so again that's kind of how it is for a volume work and if it does loosen up if you do need to loosen it I, I just kind of undo the velcro let it come out a little bit and then loosen up and then you can kind of twist it around and that loosens the the strap and if you need to retighten it I wouldn't unwind the whole thing just unloop it once and then just tighten it up and then it, that adds that retightness so you don't have to keep taking them on and off in that full set just kind of go around once and that's it so you can see how far back the wrist will bend without that strap and then how far it doesn't bend so that's how I like to wrap my wrist for some volume work and hypertrophy work where it's gonna be on for about 15 minutes uh, I'm gonna go over how I like to wrap my wrists for heavy singles or heavy triples where it's really only going to be on for about a minute maximum. Uh, this is where you're really going to start losing sensation in the fingertips. So again, just starting off like usual around the thumb loop, except instead of, and I will try and stretch it as tight as possible so that that stitching almost comes across to the front of the palm. And what I'll do is you'll notice I'll keep my hand in this like upright position. So we're casting it in that spot and then I'll grab it here, wrap it around, and then trying to maintain that same angle in the wrist, I'll go over the palm just a little bit. So let's see how far up on that palm it's going. It's a lot different this way. And then again, with as much tension as you can, wrap it around. And this is where I'll start coming down on that third revolution. I'll come down to the wrist. And then again, going over the same spot so it really feels like you've got your hand in a cast. And when I take this thumb loop off, oh, you'll see that there's really not a lot of blood flowing in my tips of my fingers. I won't be able to keep this on for that long, but you can see that it's forcing my hand almost to come forward because of the way that the elastic is stretching it down and clamping down on my wrist. So when that weight gets heavy, it's it's gonna push down as much as it can, but it can't push that wrist down. And with my with the grip gripping it, it should lock it into this position where I'm not gonna have any issues with my wrist pain or anything like that. Uh, the reason you come up a little bit higher is to get a little bit more support around the base of that palm. And again, you don't need to come up on the forearm. All you're really doing is wanting to make it thick around here because the the wrap is gonna support itself if you have a thick enough if you get it thick enough around there. So. I was gonna take this off. Oof. Yeah, you can see that blood flow coming back. Uh, but when it is wrapped around there, the the wrap supports itself. You don't need to, you don't want it to come really far up on the forearm because the wrap here is kind of wasted because it needs to be wrapped up on itself to bind in and tighten on that wrist. And then the thicker it gets, the the less your wrist can move. So if, obviously if we take that as an extreme, if all this was on the back of your wrist, you wouldn't be able to move back because it's a thicker a thicker wall to push against. Um, but yeah, so that's how the, I like to use that one. I've recently come across another 
That's how I like to use a wrist wrap. That's probably 80 centimeters. I've come across a different style of wrist wrap. This is probably what I'm going to start using for like the volume we're going to have of work. Just because it is a shorter of a wrist wrap, this is, this is significantly uh, shorter of a wrist wrap. So you really only get one revolution there. But if you're doing uh, volume work and, and reps, you don't really need it. You don't really need that high level of tension that a uh, long wrist wrap would provide. So again, you can just come around the wrist. And because this is slightly thicker elastic, um, you don't need as much of it for, for lighter work. Again, I probably wouldn't use this for super heavy singles and my max efforts. But for volume work, where the support isn't that necessary, you're just kind of adding it there for pain, pain management. When you wrap it around that one time, there's still that a nice bit of support and I can still feel my fingertips. So again, that's where the, the taste and preferences will come in. Short or long wraps, it'll depend on your usage and your why you're using that wrist wrap. So look at different options, keep an eye out, look at the different styles. Um, if you really can't get your hands on a wrist wrap, you could probably use some like ace bandages and wrap that around your wrist in the meantime until you're able to get that wrist wrap. Um, I guess if you have some knee wraps available and not wrist wraps, you, you could try that. I don't know how well that'll work. You probably have a thick, a thick there, a thick wrap there, but in a pinch that is probably going to work. Oh, so I hope that helps you with your journey on how to use some wrist wraps. Uh, leave some questions below if you have any. Uh, issues that I didn't clarify in the video. This has been Selen from Windstrength, and remember, a better life through strength.